Hey there everyone, it's KillerDog here. It really frustrates me when I see people who should be uh, strong enough to do a bit of content, but are still struggling. I have lots of friends, and I mean no offence to them by saying, but I have a lot of friends who should really be able to solo um, platinum events and tournaments, and they struggle. They struggle because they haven't really changed out of the way they play, and the way they play ends up getting them killed, which in tournaments really matters because you've only got one life. And um, so I'm doing a short series now, one for Wizard, one for Archer, and one for Knight, uh, just a video on each, to show how to beat PvE. So in these videos, I'm going to be showing uh, a low-level low build, which will be um, just strong enough to do Platinum events, and I'm going to be showing how you can tackle Platinum events and Platinum tournament um, with that kind of character, and still beat them quite easily uh, and consistently. Then I'm going to be doing a mid-level kind of build, which is kind of what I'd expect to get an end game. Uh, an end game player, but like someone who doesn't put loads of time into them. So, you know, they've played for less than a year, but they're still quite strong. And then I'm going to be doing top level uh, stuff and show how to really um, push the limits of your character to get the best damage output. Uh, so, going to be going through those three in order, and uh, hopefully, this will help out a lot of people. And please, if I do refer you to this video, I don't mean any offense to you. Um, there are lots of people out there who play this game and they play it really well. And then there are others who play it really well, but they're just not quite playing in a way that will consistently get them wins. So that's what this video is going to be doing. It's showing how to use the classes in order to get consistent wins and to just obliterate the PvE content. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's move into the video. To create my knight build, I've gone with class promotion level 50, like the other classes. And then I've gone with Relic Gear on all types, um, as well as two Tournament Rewards, two Legendary ones. Um, there are these ones here, and then just a few Dragon Calls. I've gone with the Jewel Wielding, and rather than using two Relic Swords, I used just an Artifact one instead. Uh, you still got the set bonus, and the stats are much lower. Um, are just more realistic that you'd get one of each, rather than being able to get two Relic Swords. Um, and then onto the Skill Points. I have got done um, exactly the same on the passives, which is 10 in armor. This will double the armor you have and just half the damage you take. It's absolutely vital. 20% uh, more damage. This one's really good as well, uh, just for the damage output. Uh, the extra move speed here, um, incredibly useful for doing all event content, especially when you've got to dodge stuff. Um, and then celerity. This is this is key for using the particular skills uh, which are important in order to yeah reduce the rate they come back. And then getting 5 in mana drain and 5 in spirit. The uh, mana potions, while they massively increase the mana you get, they only increase the mana you get when you would actually be getting mana. So if you didn't have any points in this, you wouldn't gain any mana over time. Um, so you need this mana over time, which then gets massively increased by the um, mana pot. And then I've got 5 in here, which you probably don't need, but um, it's always useful that if your mana is actually dropping, that you have this as a backup of your basic attacks, you can regain mana really quickly with the mana potions. I'm going to have all potions active just because this is, you know, only just strong enough to do platinum difficulty. So um, you'd get these bonuses, you'd want to be using these. I uh, get the two minute potions from maps and then just use those. Um, and then as for these skills, I've had to use a few skill runes uh, simply to increase my power without adding many stats. Um, so I've got a few skill runes on ones which I'm not using. But anyway, the 70 points which I put into here, because there's 50 points into passives, 70 points into active skills. I've actually got 71 because I've got one point in dual wield, uh, just so that I can use the dual wielding. Putting 10 points in this will only actually add about 250 damage onto onto the character, which when you look at the total damage I have right now, like 40,000, I mean, there's no point adding 250 on. When you're low on skill points, it's, it's not a good choice. Um, so I have put 10 points into these various skills. Now, knights are mainly known for being tanks. Uh, that's the class build. However, every class in King's Road has good damage output too. The problem with knights, though, is that a lot of the damage output comes in skill runes. So when you're a low level, you can't actually get great damage output. Also, right now, uh, this build is actually uh, it's kind of too weak to actually get good damage output. It's one of the problems when you're just coming up to these uh, these first. You know, when you get just enough power to do these things. And you can bypass that by going higher promotion and, you know, actually being stronger. Um, but I'm, because I'm going in and I won't be doing any crits, really, and when I do crit, it doesn't do much damage. Like, the damage output this on this is so low. And the other classes have pet damage, which can bypass this. However, knights don't. 
So I'm only actually going to be doing the event. I'm not going to be doing the event and the tournament simply for time reasons because it does take a really long time. However, what you can do, no matter what level you are, well, by this stage, is you can become a super tank in PvE. The main reason why you can do this is with a cooldown potion and with a few particular bits. So the way to do this is mainly with protector and holy shield. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, holy shield. So protector, you don't need any scoron in this. The scoron is actually quite bad, the ones that are out at the moment. But this will give you 6% damage reduction for 10 seconds. And a cooldown potion, this gives 13 second cooldown. Which means there's only 3 seconds when you don't have that damage reduction. Then, with Holy Shield, what you have is you have a small shield that goes for 5 seconds. The cooldown on this, you can see, is 7 seconds. So, that's almost active constantly. However, that shield actually bursts quite quickly. So, it's not particularly useful. But, what does make it useful is this particular skill rune, Shield of Light. There's also, there's another one... Uh, Shield of Frost that does exactly the same thing, so you don't even get need to get this to max really. I've got it, um, this goes to reddit quality, so this isn't quite maxed out, and if you look at the damage reduction there, it's 30% rather than maxing out at 40%. That 30% damage reduction goes for 5 seconds, which when you consider you're using this uh, this skill every 7 seconds, and it adds that shield on first, and then after the shield bursts, you get 5 seconds of 30% damage reduction, Basically, use that in line with Protector, and you have almost 90% uh, 90 damage reduction almost all the time. There's only that 3 second window between Protectors where you can actually take a lot of damage. So, that combined with some other skills as well means you can just tank almost anything. Uh, the only problem is the damage output. So, what I'm going to be trying to do is to show just how well you can tank, and then, you know, if you actually have the damage output yourself, then things all should be fine. That's the idea of this. So, now that I've gone through that, um, I'm going to show the other ones which I've got. So I've got Enrage here for... Um, sorry, let me catch my breath. <sighs> Wasn't breathing properly during that. So Enrage here for the auto crits. This isn't vital, but uh, just because I wanted to make sure that there's a way to crit, I put this in, and um, I added the Scorin Demon's Rage, which can add extra damage as well as some extra armor. So um, that's leveled up a little bit. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of a nice skill to have. I think it does actually help quite a lot with the damage output uh, for the build I have going on. Then, um, also for tanking, you need Angelic Form. This is to cover that 3 second window um, occasionally. So, um, this, you know, gives you huge damage reduction for a period of time. And, um, yeah, it just means that uh, if everything screws up, you can go to Angelic Form. That's the idea. Lay on hands. This isn't the most useful skill, but as you'll see, in combination with all the other tanking things, this is really good just for keeping your health topped up. It basically means I don't have to use any potions while I'm tanking, and I can be surviving for a really long time. Then, for actual damage output, I've only got one skill, and that is it, Cleave. The reason why I've only got this one skill is when you've got a cooldown potion active, you can spam this off so frequently, it's much better to be focusing on your damage skills and then just use this whenever you... Uh, whenever you don't use the damage skills, and uh, sorry, whenever you're not using the defense skills. So uh, the combo here is using Sparkling Gift with Cleave. Sparkling Gift will pull all the enemies together so that you can cleave them all every single time you use it. And Cleave itself does loads of damage. So I've put Empowered Water Cleave. You could use any really uh, any skill in on this. I've only picked Empowered Water Cleave because um, it's going to be doing the normal damage against these water enemies. So. I'm going to be using that, I've leveled it up a bit, and yeah, that's just going to be your main source of damage output. Sparkling Gift, I've not leveled at all. This, in fact, removes the base damage, so this will do almost no damage at all. Literally, all it will be used for is when the enemies are spread out, you use it, they all get pulled in, and then you can carry on cleaving them. So, in terms of damage output, you want to use those two skills, uh, the combo effect there, and then um, you spam Enrage as frequently as you can, you spam... Um, Holy Shield as frequently as you can, and then Protector as well. Um, okay, I'll get into that when I'm actually showing it. But Protector, you'll sometimes delay that a little bit if you're on Angelic Form. And then Angelic Form and Lay on Hands you only use when they, uh, when you do. So I'm going to talk a little bit of theory here before I actually go in and do it, because um, I may even have to cut it short because it's going to be it's going to be a while uh, doing that fight. So what you want to do at the beginning? So I'll just get rid of these. So what you want to do at the beginning, before you go into any combat, is use Shield of Light. Wait for that, at the end of it, you'll get the damage reduction. Now you can go in, use Protector, Shield of Light again, and right now I've got 90% damage reduction uh, for 5 seconds. 
then I've got a bit a bit more and I can just keep using shield of light. Now when the three second when you get to the three seconds, if there are loads of enemies at that point, you want to quickly flip and put on angelic form. If there aren't so many enemies, tank it up or otherwise just run to the side slightly, waiting for those three seconds to pass before then you put protector back on. And whenever shield of light comes off cooldown you just keep using it. That should pretty much be you sorted, and then otherwise um, I'll just wait for the things to respawn. Otherwise you just basically want to uh, go in with Spark and Gift and then be cleave, 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 cleave. Uh, make sure you use Demon's Rage whenever you can, cleave, cleave, and you know, using these other skills uh, whenever they come off cooldown. So in that three second window there are a few different options that you can do each time. One of them is if everything's really in a bad state, there are lots of enemies, you're going to die then use Angelic Form. And even while you're on Angelic Form, keep using Shield of Light. Um, after a few seconds of Angelic Form, put Protector back on and then continue on as you were. Uh, the other, Another case is you can uh, try and tank it and use Lay on Hands. That doesn't always work because you don't know exactly how much, uh, how much damage you're going to be taking. However, it can be perfectly fine to just tank for those three seconds and then uh, heal, heal yourself back up at the end. Another way of doing it is to simply run away and, and run around just for those three seconds. It's not that long, and you can always use Sparkling Gift to get straight back into the combat. If you put all that together and you play that way, any challenge should be no problem. Um, I tried the tournament challenge, and it did take a little bit of time getting used to it, knowing when to use the skill uses, uh, use the different skills and stuff, but I got the hang of it, and I was surviving. The only problem is it took ages, because my damage output just wasn't there. So I'm going to go into the event now and um, show, show how this all comes together, putting it in practice, and you'll see just how well I tank. Uh, so yeah, let's go into the event now. Now we're going to start this off exactly the same way I said, so Shield of Light, wait for a few seconds. This boss actually takes a little bit of time to start up, so I can run in here now, use Protector, Shield of Light, I'm using Rage right now, pull the enemies together with Spark and Gift, and then start cleaving. So I use Shield of Light again as soon as that comes off cooldown. We're about to hit 3 second window and there are loads of enemies so I'm just going to straight away use Angelic Form. Um, I don't need to use Protector for a few seconds so I can just keep cleaving. But um, important to keep doing Shield of Light when you've got uh, Angelic Form on. So the small enemies are down and oh, we're about to hit the 3 second window again. However not many enemies so kind of fine just to tank it up uh, for those 3 seconds. Shield of Light back on again. Okay, the enemies are coming in. Uh, three second window coming up, so I'm going to angelic form again. Um, I'm going to try and drag these enemies in together, but oh, I'm getting knocked around a bit. Alright, there we go. Now we're going. Three second window coming up. Uh, how do I want to do it? I'll run to the side. Be ready with lay on hands. Probably fine. Okay, there we go. Things back up. Now I can be hitting the enemies again. I'm just going to heal up because my health was going down a bit. Uh, need to watch out for this move, the stay away from the boss move. This can get me, so I need to make sure um, that I don't get caught up in it because it stops you from using skills for a bit and that obviously kills you. So I'm going to use Angelic Form again and as you can see I haven't really been taking much damage at all. Like The only problem here is the damage output which like I said it's because how I am built up right now, I haven't got the stats I need to properly do this. So while I can tank up hugely, I can't actually take them down. So I'm going to stop it here, really. Um, I did die there, but like that's because I didn't move from the from that attack. Um, I wasn't concentrating properly. But I'm going to stop it here, uh, just because I've been going for a couple of minutes. And this is going to be going on. As you can see, the boss health is down by about a quarter. Like, it takes forever. So I'm not going to show the rest of it. But hopefully that shows you well enough how you can tank even when you're uh, low on stats and you don't even have the damage output. Um, so yeah, if you did have a bit more damage output, then you'd be perfectly fine to do any challenge. And uh, I'm not going to show the tournament as well. So I'll move on to the mid-level build now. For the mid-level night build, I'm not trying to show something which is an uh, end-game goal for everyone. I'm trying to show that in-between bit uh, where you're not you're not weak anymore. You haven't just geared up. You've got some skill runes, but you haven't got all the ones you want. And your elemental stats aren't particularly high. Your promotion as well. Um, I've got promotion level 70. So here, um, 
Uh, yeah, sorry, I want to show you elemental stats. 78% is what I picked for this. Um, I feel that's like, it's off the base amount. It's where you've worked on it a bit, but you're not, you're not getting a, a crazy amount of elemental damage. And, uh, then when it comes to the skills, passive skills are exactly the same as the low level. Just the 15 points that are necessary, uh, putting any more in there isn't gonna do, uh, isn't gonna do too much. Um, with the active skills though, there is a bit of a change around. I've decided to, uh, remove enrage because this, uh, I was purely using for the uh, the crit guaranteed crit, which now that you are critting and you've got proper good damage output, uh, proper damage output, you don't need that. Um, in fact, the change around in general is to add a lot more damage skills onto it because you can actually deal good damage now. Um, and the defense side of things is mainly focused around um, spikes, getting them to level 99. So I've got 200 skill points on here, I think. Um, just going to add 50 in there. Got 10, uh, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and then, um, 100 on there. So 190 onto the 50s. 240. Okay, 240 skill points. So a bit more than the other classes. Uh, but I boosted up a little bit more, uh, just to get spikes to level 99. Uh, that was probably where you'd get, you know, leave the points out. You have sort of maybe 60 plus on that, and then, you know, you carry on working on there, uh, on it from there. But that's where you're going to see a very, very nice damage reduction. So I'll just show you here what it actually does. Uh, for 30 seconds, and consider it's got a 40 second cooldown, it's an almost constant boost. Um, in fact, when you use it, it's 33, yeah, 33. So there's 3 seconds of downtime and 30 seconds of a 300% armor boost, which is the equivalent of 60% damage reduction. So it's like the protector skill, however, um, it's a constant effect. Um, unlike Protector, which needs a cooldown potion in order to have that uh, that period where you just have the three seconds of downtime. So it's like a, a higher level version of Protector that um, doesn't need a cooldown potion. So that, on top of Protector, is an extremely good amount of damage reduction. And then you've still got the Shield of Light here, which um, it's now has the rune maxed. Um, those three skills are going to be your sort of core defense skills that are going to give you a lot of tanking potential. And ultimately is what makes this uh, this this class a tank. Um, then you've got Angelic Form still and Lay on Hands. I've still got these two skills, so they're kind of the ones you turn to at certain points. Plus, with the Lord of Winter scoring on this, um, you have the damage potential here. So, since your elemental stats aren't aren't ridiculously high, a 200% water boost is going to massively increase your damage output. So this scoring is is very nice and means that water builds on the knight are um, are a really good choice. So I've got water scorings on here as well. Uh, to, yeah, kind of, you know, maximize that. The skills which I've got maxed are Flowing Blades, uh, Empowered Water Cleave, um, Sparking Gift, this is still base level, and then uh, Poison, sorry, Dancing Toxic, uh, Thorn Skin, although that's not necessary to be maxed, um, I just kind of ended up with it maxed, uh, Freezing Aura, uh, Shield of Light, Protective Waves, and then um, the Lord of Winter. So, a few skills maxed there, uh, but not all of them. Um, I haven't got any rune on Protector because they're not particularly useful. And then, yeah, so talked about the, the defense options. I'll just uh, quickly mention as well, Protective Waves. This ultimately makes Lay on Hands a bit more useful because um, otherwise it's just a heal and your heal isn't going to be that useful. When you're using the cooldown potion, it's very useful because you've got such great damage reduction that your your damage is, your, sorry, your health isn't going to be going down by much. So when it does get low, just healing up, simply healing up, is going to help you out a lot. Now, because you haven't got so crazy constant damage reduction uh, without, because uh, you're not using a cooldown potion, a simple heal isn't going to be so effective. So l the protective wave scurrying means that you also get a shield on top of it, and ultimately means that you get a lot of a lot of protection for a short period of time, uh, which is nice. Makes it a little bit more like angelic, but uh, not quite. Uh, so in terms of damage. Where this comes from is Sparkling Gift. So Sparkling Gift wasn't particularly useful when you're low level. However, at this point, you can pull all the enemies together, uh, all the small enemies in to where you are, and uh, even does it to medium enemies too. There's only certain enemies that can't be pulled around. So we'll pull them all in, and then you can hit them with uh, stuff like Cleave, Will, uh, Dancing, uh, Dancing Toxic. Those three skills will do great damage to uh, to any nearby enemies and just wipe them out fast. Uh, I want to give a mention to Dancing Toxic, Toxic especially because this is actually uh, an incredibly damaging rune. So here I'm going with like in general a water build, however Dancing Toxic deals roughly, um, 
I don't want to go through the exact numbers, but it's like roughly towards 400% nature, uh, nature as a damage over time to all those enemies around, and it hits a large area. So this is a, a incredibly good damage skill, and with a cooldown of 4 seconds means you can spam it uh, really frequently. So that has a lot of use, uh, even if it doesn't fit perfectly with your build, uh, you can fit it in there uh, quite nicely. And so you've got uh, Sparkling Gift pulling in the enemies, but also either Thorn, thorn Skin or Ember Glow on this. They don't deal much damage, and you don't particularly need to level them up, uh, to be honest. Uh, that's just I just had it for the slowing effect, and uh, to be honest, it wasn't necessary. So this every seven hits you take. It says every seventh melee hit, but that's actually from range as well. So every seven hits you take, uh, then it pulls all enemies in towards you. So this kind of works. Uh, it helps out a bit, so you don't always have to use sparkling gift. This just kind of passively pulls them in as well. Like I said, just get the rune, slap it on, and you're mainly using spikes for the armor buff anyway. So this just helps you out a little bit. It means you don't have to always use uh, Spark and a Gift in every case. So those two skills are going to be putting all the enemies in. You've got the other ones to uh, deal great damage to all those enemies. And then you've got Flowing Blades, uh, which just deals some very nice damage to a single target. So you can use that to, uh, to damage the boss a bit faster. So all that combined, you've actually got a very, very complete setup that works very nicely. And uh, you'll see as I come to play with, uh, play with it uh, just how solid it is. There are a few things you've got to look out for though, which is um, Thorn Skin, that 3 seconds of downtime, you will suddenly take a lot of damage at once. So you need to make sure you're aware of when it's coming up, and uh, you make sure you're not going to be getting hit loads at that period of time. However, while you have Thorn Skin active, you just need some kind of other damage reduction uh, effect, and you should be good to tank most things. So as long as you can kind of like, you know, use your, use your skills carefully, and... Uh, yeah, just be aware of when you're going to be hit lots. You can manage your health and just continue attacking the enemies. Any small enemies you just wipe out really quickly. Uh, so it's it's just kind of the big bosses that you'll be you'll be stuck attacking for a while. So yeah. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now and uh, we'll go into the event. Now it's finally time to do some damage. So make sure you put thorn thorn skin on in advance. Um, I like to put shield light on in advance too, and um. Then I'm going to wait for the enemies to close in, then use Sparkling Gift, pull them all in. Um, oh, whoops, did not mean to use Angelic Form. But anyway, all's good. Can just take them out ridiculously quickly now, uh, cause I've, especially because I've got um, Angelic Form on. He's doing an annoying attack, so I've got to stand to the side. Um, I'll just put throw in Dancing Toxic there to take out the enemy. Now, I've got to bear in mind, um, Thorn Skin is about to come off, so I need to flip, put it straight back on as soon as I can. Um, also, from this point on, the boss seems to do a couple of annoying attacks, so I've got to watch out for them, but otherwise I should be pretty safe. One of them is the one he's got on right now. All those tornadoes, they do a lot of damage uh, combined, so I had to heal up there, did I? I managed to get it in just in time, as you can see. Wasn't too bad. So again, pull the enemies in. Excuse Angelic Form again, because it's there. And um, the boss isn't too far away from death. Oh, okay. It's jumped up again. Okay, gotta just wait a bit. I'll wait for the tornado to go all the way in this time. No point risking it. Okay, now just gotta watch out to see if he does any nasty attack at the end. There we go. All done. And uh, nice and solid there, I felt. So now I'm gonna go on to the tournament. For this tough challenge, it's very important. It's very important to manage your defenses. Uh, again, I'm going to go for the range enemies purely for the reason because um, you do enter some difficult situations where you can't actually uh, fully tank things. So you need to run around and wait for the cooldowns a bit. Uh, it's unfortunate and uh, doesn't happen everywhere, but um, you can manage it if you focus on um, taking down at least one of the range enemies. So that it's gone, and then you can kind of circuit round. So I'm coming up to the point now. Um, it's especially when your spikes are off cooldown. You need to, um, well, sorry, they're not on. You need to make sure you're ready to circle round. So I'm just going to circle round for a little bit while, um, while my cooldowns come back, and putting on some defenses. So right now I can attack for a little bit, but I know I'm not going to be able to attack for long before I need to start moving again. And uh, it's a little annoying as well that I have to use a couple of healing potions during this fight, but 
that's unfortunately the way it is. So Angelic Form's coming up. Can use that for massive damage to try and take down this wolf. Um, so that there's only only one... Um, well, sorry, only two enemies here. I did get a little bit spam happy with my defences there. Uh, that was purely because I was trying to make sure that I did keep them up. And I hadn't kept track of what I was doing because I was talking. Ooh, he managed to hit me nicely there. Okay. So heal up again. Alright. I can start attacking now. Should be able to take down the, the bear, hopefully. Alright, I've got my big ones ready. So I can heal up here now. Put on shield of light. Bear down. Now it's just the last enemy. Which, <laughs> I can't target it. Okay, I can't target the last enemy. So, you can see now the challenge is done, basically. And, um, unfortunately, a couple of healing potions uh, used during it. And I did have to circle around a little bit. But that's just simply because this challenge is actually very hard. So, um, yeah, I'll show another more normal tournament challenge now. This challenge is going to be much easier to tank. So I can just simply uh, fo well, focus a lot more on the attacking. So I'm going to start by grouping the enemies together, taking them all out, and uh, nice, nice and cleanly. Then I'm going to be able to focus solely on the boss, and uh, now I'm going to spam those um, those skills which I can use more frequently uh, while I wait. Uh, well, uh, sorry, this is my train of thought here. <laughs> I, I was confused because the boss disappeared, and then I remembered. Oh yeah, this, that's what this boss does. Um, so yeah. Just going to use Angelic Form to get some damage dealing going. Uh, the other enemies are probably going to appear fairly soon. Yep, there we go. They appeared. Um, I'm going to take out these archers actually because they're going to be a little bit annoying. Heal up because I need to. And all the enemies are down. So I can focus on the boss again. Um, I'm going to use Shield of Light. I'm not really... a little bit worried because uh, a lot of my... just Defense skills are on cooldown right now, but it should be okay. Uh, one problem as well is I notice I can't quite get to the end with my with my mana, so I hope I have to use a a potion just to restore that mana there. And there we go, boss down. So that was a more typical uh, tournament challenge. And now I'm going to move on to the high level uh, well, or top level uh, knight. With this high level knight, I'm trying to show the end goal for knights to get to. That kind of stage where you've got all the screwings you want, you've got high promotion, you've got good elemental stats. At uh, that point, I feel like quite a few people have reached, it'll take over a year to get there. However, if you work hard on the elemental jewels and um, all the other elements of the game, then you should be able to get there. And I feel like at this point, a lot of people feel like they can do, they can easily do PvE. However, they could optimize a lot better to uh, to just defeat the enemies better, uh, like quicker and also more effectively, so that you're consistently doing it, you're not dying, uh, that kind of thing. So, with this, I'm not trying to show like those top people who are like ridiculously powerful, can do everything easily. However, once you get to this stage, you can easily defeat things, um, as well as yeah, survive as you do it. So I've gone with 120 pro class promotion. Elemental stats are at 150% or so. Um, the ones I am actually using here are water and nature. Uh, there's a little bit of light in there as well. Uh, but yes, yeah, mainly water and nature I've gone with. With the skill points, I've gone for 500 skill points, which takes a while to get to, obviously. But I'm talking over a year here. And if you, you know, you work hard at the stuff, you've got the, the right jewels for it and everything, then you, um, hopefully get there as your end goal. So 50 points in passives. There's really not any, any need to put any more than this. Um, the mana ones you could do more, but ultimately, uh, you just want to get over 100 mana, really, for um, for the, the use of stuff. And if you need more mana, then use a Rejuvenation Potion to restore it. Um, so those aren't going to do you much good, other than those essential ones. With this, I've put up uh, 450 points in there, so it's 500 total. And um, things have changed up a little, uh, quite a bit since uh, the mid-level. Uh, well, uh, actually, I take that back. They haven't changed that much. There's just uh, a few things that have been brought in. So one of the things that's been brought in is Enrage. This wasn't used before, mainly because it doesn't actually do much until you get it to level 99. And when it, what it does at level 99 is it gives you a 100% damage boost, which bear in mind you've already got a 20% damage boost from the passive, uh, means that it, it 
multiplies it by, I think it's 1.83, or something like that. But anyway, it's a huge damage boost for 7 seconds, and um, also getting it up to level 19 now reduces the cooldown to 30 seconds. So the, the Scorians don't do that much on this. Um, I've just got Freezing Rage, which uh, adds a little bit of damage onto it. Um, a little bit, well, I say a little bit. It's actually quite good, uh, but ultimately... This, the main fo reason to use the skill is for the auto crit 7 second duration of um, almost doubling your damage. So that combined with the Lord of Winter water boost uh, means that you can use the two of them and then do uh, loads of, use loads of water skills and do tons of damage with that uh, very effectively. Um, I've gone mainly with water skills here. Uh, you could go for water or nature, but because I'm facing water enemies, if I use loads of nature skills, I just absolutely obliterate the enemies and it wouldn't prove anything other than, you know, use nature or water and it's good. So I've gone with water skills and then they're going to be getting that bonus from Lord of Winter. Um, so yeah, I feel like it's a realistic representation of what the what the class should do. So I've got uh, dual wield up to 10 points now. Like I was explaining back at the beginning, you only really need one point. Getting t uh, the extra 9 points in this will mean you get about 200 damage or, or so. Um, it's not a whole lot of use for it, but when you've got loads of skill points, you may as well just get some extra damage from it, right? We've got Nature Wield in here, and um, you could go with any one of these, any one of the sort of special wield ones. So there's Shadow Wield, Light Wield, and Nature Wield right now. All of these, they add um, an amount of elemental damage onto each basic attack you do, which amounts to a reasonable amount, to be honest. Um, if you've got any boosts, so like, for example, I've got 150% Nature Boost, See that 5,680, that's going to be multiplied by 2.5, and that is going to be added onto every single basic attack you do. So it's it's not going to be like a reason to do basic attacks rather than skills, but it does increase your, your damage output quite nicely. Um, and then what I'm going to talk about now, oh, actually one last thing, is that Lay on Hands, I'm no longer using this in the setup. Switch it out for, for Enrage. However, um, you could use this. It's just, I feel like uh, you can tank well enough that you don't need all the defense skills, and this is one that has long cooldown and stuff, so you're using it slightly less, and you can replace it with uh, with a rejuvenation potion. Um, you know, just it's not absolutely necessary. So I'm not having that one in the setup. So the next thing to talk about is the skill points. So the extra skill points I put in, cleave is a good one, a good choice for putting extra skill points in. So this normally has a cooldown of two seconds, which is incredibly low. And considering you've got lots of other damage skills which you can be using, um, namely uh, Hurl here, which has 4 second cooldown, actually you can't use it particularly efficiently. So this benefits from getting it to full, um, a 4 second cooldown by maxing it, and it gets loads of damage onto the skill. This is brilliant especially for PvP, where each skill use really, count, uh, really matters, and um, yeah, just making this do more damage per hit uh, means it's going to wipe out the enemies really, really quickly. Um, then I've got uh, a Dancing Toxic still. This is going to be a great damage dealer in general. Spamming between Empowered Water Cleave and Dancing Toxic when you've used Sparkling Gift to pull the enemies together means they're going to die just almost instantly. It's really useful. And then also you've got Whirl there, uh, which does exactly the same. All three of them do us um, do air effect around where you are. I mean, hell, you can you can do from range as well, but uh, ultimately you're going to pull everything in and hit them all with those with those skills. Then you've still got Flowing Blades as the best, uh, that's the best Gorion on there, to be doing um, great damage to a single target. So you spam that off when there's a single target, but if there's any more than one enemy, you probably want to be using the other skills. And so between those four skills, that's enough to spam off uh, spam off where all the enemies are. Uh, sorry, spam off constantly um, with like using the other ones between. Now I like to spam Shield of Light here. Um, I've gone through this Gorion before, and it, it's still great at this stage. Um, I like to spam that as much as possible. And then also with spikes, remember you've got that three second window where spikes is off that you've got to be very careful about, but otherwise you should be okay. And because you've got the better armor and health at this point, uh, spikes with spamming that and then protector when things get tricky should be enough, as well as you've got um, angelic form for when things get really tough or for otherwise boosting it. And yeah, actually I forgot about talk about this. So the reason why I put more skill points in this it ups the mana cost by a great deal. However, what this does is it means the it lasts longer. The duration increases from 7 up to 10 seconds. I would push this further if I had more skill points, but um, yeah, ultimately, I think this is the next one to do for PvE anyway, after you've got these three other skills. Uh, getting Angelic Form up to that 10 seconds just means you're going to be able to, uh, to obliterate everything for that 10 seconds. I mean, 
you don't have to worry about defences for that in the entire time, so it's great. And in PvP, PvP as well, it's still 10 seconds, so yeah. It's a great choice, and you could go for some other things, but I feel like it's a, I feel like it's a good one to go for. An, on, an honourable mention is Sunder, actually. This is uh, the Barbarian Advanced skill, and when you have this maxed out, it does 1,550 um, damage, as well as 450% on... Um, sorry, 1,550 percent and then 450% as a damage over time, as well as having a skill rune, which, uh, this is the first skill rune, and I assume that the others are going to be just as powerful. They had a lot of uh, nature damage on. This has a 20 second cooldown, which makes it slightly less appealing. However, it does do incredible damage, and it hits like a little area in front of you, which if you pull together the enemies with Sparkling Gift, and then Sunder, it does loads of damage. Um, the thing is, when you actually test things out with all these different skills going on, you find that the skills I'm using are optimal. They just do loads of damage to a uh, to a nice little area, and you can spam them off and just kill things. I mean, you don't need that that sunder. Um, for the reason it takes 99 points as well, it's kind of less appealing. However, you might like be able to remove well and replace it with sunder later on, like if you have more skill points or you know screwings go on there that make it really powerful and more appealing. I don't know, but just wanted to mention it now. So in terms of actually playing. Um, you want to do the same thing of Thorn Skin at the beginning, and then, oh sorry, just get rid of that, um, and then also a Shield of Light, and then you just go in uh, with the, the Sparkling Gift and start spamming off skills. That's pretty much it. You just spam off the skills, and um, uh, I got that wrong, sorry. <laughs> so you do you do the Thorn Skin, you do the Shield of Light, and then what I like to do is uh, go in with Enrage and start spamming off the skills. So Enrage at the beginning, however, in some cases, it's better to also use Lord of Winter as well. So you do Lord of Winter and Freezing Rage, and then that means that your water skills do loads of damage and you kill the enemies off really quickly. So I'll probably be using Lord of Winter uh, when, I do, when I do it, but um, I'll, I won't use Lord of Winter in some challenges, just so you can see the, the difference. But um, when you're killing things off so quickly, then it's actually good to use Lord of Winter and you can just finish the challenge in like 10 seconds. So um, yeah, we'll... We'll see how it goes. But anyway, I'm going to go into the event and show this thing in action. We're in the event now, and I'm going to use the thorns, uh, put that on, and then I'm going to whirl. Now, this takes a second to, to wind up, so that's why I did the whirl there. Um, all the enemies come in, so I'm going to pull them all in, and then just cleave, and like, you know, they just, they were just disintegrated. Um, unfortunately, I wait for the boss to do these attacks here. Uh, so my Lord of Winter's come off, so just ready a shield of light and then now I'll go in and I'll be completely invincible so I'll just use the different skills here oh actually look at that we got um we got enrage again so there we go finished it up uh, and as you saw no threat of death whatsoever plus loads of damage output I mean um you got to be careful with the with the defense skills uh, you don't want to spam too many of them off uh, or else you can enter like periods of time where you where you can die and you got to keep an eye on thorn skin especially uh, just look on the cooldown on it, I find works best because you know you've got, oh it's, it's two seconds or so, uh, three or two sec two or three seconds um, of that window, um, you know, before you have to reapply it. But anyway, um, that's it for the event, so let's move on to the tournament. For the tournament, I'm going to be showing four different challenges which, uh, they show various things for, for the night class. So this first one is lots of enemies and there's no way to do this one quickly because you've got to wait for the respawning enemies. So you can't simply uh, tank up and uh, kill them all off really quickly like you could in the event just now. Um, however, archers can do okay in it. Um, it's actually a bit, a bit more of a nightmare for the other classes. Um, for knights, you know, they've got the they've got the tanking that they can do. Um, did Lord of Winter work? Yeah, it did. Okay, I'm just low on health anyway. Um, so yeah, the problem is actually keeping my health topped up, simply for the reason that. Um, I haven't got the um, the healing that I did have before, so I used a potion there. But you know, it's just kind of uh, because this is a longer extended fight, and I've got no way to actually heal. Um, except maybe you could argue the um, Lord of Winter. Uh, but anyway, so I would recommend just kind of using healing potion this kind of challenge, the one that's extended. You can see my health was slowly going down. Uh, there was no actual threat of death there. It was just I needed topping up. Uh, but anyway, so I just kind of spammed off the skills there, made sure that um, I had 
shield of light and protect it going on, spikes uh, that stayed on, and then if I got into a bad situation, I could always use Lord of Winter. The next challenge I'm going to show is one that's uh, really quite tricky for archers, but for knights, it's no trouble at all. So this challenge, you need to take down the towers before you take down the boss, and taking down the towers spawns enemies. So you can clear out the small enemies pretty quickly at the beginning. Then I'm going to be taking down one of the towers. So I'll just use Lord of Winter here, um, so I can really quickly um, take down those enemies there. As you can see, no trouble at all, <laughs> and um, move on to the next tower. So this again, um, I'm going to start off with a whirl. They get dragged in, and there we go, enemies down. I need to reapply spikes here. Oh, well, there's a couple of enemies. I'm just going to take these out because of cooldown. Um, because I'll wait, you know, I'll get the cooldowns back on my other skills. And then I need to top up on, um, what's it called? Um, 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 can't remember what that was. Top up on mana, sorry, that's what I meant. Top up on mana. And as you can see, really quickly take down the boss after you've taken down the towers. So that boss alone, because he's, he's meant to just be kind of an annoyance until you can kill him. Uh, you can run around and avoid him as you go and just make sure you have enough defences on each time you take down each of the towers. So yeah, um, the next challenge I'm going to be showing is one I can't remember now. Um, am I going to show permafrost? can't remember. No, I think it's this one I'm going to show. Number six. So this guy has a really annoying melee attack. It's like a blast around him. It shows a little blue uh, blue area on the ground before it goes off. So I'm going to tank up as I normally would uh, to go for a quick boss kill. Because you can take down the majority of the enemies at this point. However, you've got to get away uh, when your, your angelic form goes off. And make sure that you only go in when you're actually going to be invincible. Because you can see there, that's the blue area around him where he would uh, he would do that really powerful attack. Um, I was invincible at that time, so I could easily handle it. Uh, but he's going to do it again. I'm going to have to heal up, unfortunately. Um, and, oh, I actually got killed because Spikes wasn't on. Eh, okay, let's do that again. I forgot about spikes coming off. <laughs> but yeah, so as you can see, this change is a little bit trickier. There's the risk of death. There's that constant kind of threat that the boss may do the really powerful move, um, which the other two classes don't have so much trouble with. I actually found out about that move because um, my uh, uh, sorry my wizard died to it, and my wizard's strong enough that I'm able to uh, practically go in and tank everything. However, I died, and I was like, what What killed me? I, I shouldn't be dying here. And then, um, yeah, I realised it's that one particular move that's super, super strong. So, um, on knights, you can actually kind of go invincible, um, so it's kind of fine, but you need to be careful. You can't just go rushing in, and um, yeah, as you can see, much smoother this time. Well, I say that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I went a bit trigger happy at the end there. Um, got the kill at the same time. Probably should have stayed back and taken out the enemies first. Uh, but anyway, it all worked out fine in the end. Um, and then I'm going to show you one more challenge. I uh, can't remember exactly which one this was going to be. Um, I think it was this one, maybe? So this is just to show, again, the um, like with the event, how to power up and really overpower a boss before you can do anything. This challenge has a lot that happens. However, at the beginning, it's not too bad. So you can power up with your buffs, go straight in, Attack with everything you've got, and then um, prolong the defences by putting on um, Shield of Light and Protector, because you know that's going to make you invincible. Now, unfortunately, I've got lag right now, so I couldn't quite go for a quick... I think I'm going to be able to tank long enough. Yeah, just about. But um, yeah, <laughs> that stopped me from attacking for a few seconds there. Um, so, as you can see, able to take down the boss before really much happened. And uh, that's where, when you get strong, you're going to completely overpower things uh, with the with that buff of um, uh, Enrage plus Lord of Winter, and then just spamming your damage skills. I mean, you just you become invincible and do ridiculous damage for ten seconds or so. Um, so, well, seven seconds, sorry. Um, so anyway, that wraps up this video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed me uh, going through this all. I hope it's been very helpful. And if you have any night friends who aren't sure how to play, uh, or you just see them uh, not you know, dying or just not playing optimally. Um, I hope you can send them to this video and, you know, feel like they're going to get a uh, good bit of education. 
Um, I learned a lot while going through this myself. Knight is one of the uh, one of the classes which I really have a lot of fun playing, but um, I I have not practiced on it so much. I think mainly because it's a melee class and I play a ranged class. Like it's just it feels so different to play. Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I will not be doing a a redo of this video for a very long time, if at all. The reason being is I feel like there's a lot enough tools here with the base skills and stuff that actually you can deal with any kind of PvE content. So there may be some developments and stuff in the future that then mean uh, you need to introduce other things as well. However, I feel like this will probably stand the test of time. So I hope, you know, if you're watching this far in the future, it's still relevant. And um, I don't want to redo it um, if, if I, if I, um, unless I have to. Um, so anyway, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.